بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز بالقرآن بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة ولو ألقى معاذيرة هنا the Quranic text is amazing والله because I understand Arabic when I look for the translation it's really very difficult I feel how down English language takes the meanings whatever you do but I will do my best بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة indeed in fact verily the one of us the human being the man the woman will be or is a witness against himself. He's aware of what he is doing. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِيرَهُ Despite the fact that he or she is presenting or bringing up excuses. What does this mean? Allah is referring to a very important psychological fact which is that we are provided with a built-in divine tool within ourselves to tell us about right and wrong with the basics, which means none of us will be able to escape from it. It has nothing to do if I went to school or not. It has nothing to do with the fact that I was able to attend the school or not, or I have a degree or not, it doesn't matter. It's a built-in divine system. <laughs> built-in. It's the fitra. By fitra, I realize generally the basics of right and wrong. Otherwise, there is no way how Allah will set all of us for accountability Unless if you went to schools, but no, 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 no. The fitra, the built-in system, basically is the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu a'lam is referring, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا Verily, indeed, if I want to do my own translation for the word basira, basira, I can translate it, the core meaning is a very deep insight into, from the word basar. Basira, you know, insight, which means as if Allah is telling us, look, you, my servant, every single person of us is provided, provided with a system that enables him or her to be aware with a very deep insight about his self, his soul from inside. Your intention, your feelings, what do you think, what do you feel? I will give you one proof to that and one Quranic, sorry, one prophetic message about that and I will finish. Now, if I want to ask, how can I know that this is right and wrong? Allah provided us part of the fitrah with the concept of by default analogy. Qiyas al-Badahi. Very simple. What do you think about this? This is good or bad? Simply. Make analogy, put yourself in that place, by default. No, 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 this is, this is no good, this is bad. Why? Simply, if I was there, I feel bad. <laughs> I don't like it. So therefore, I can judge, not necessarily to be there. Do we need to go to school, for example, to be educated? What does it mean if I'm holding something which is mine and I own it? And someone came and just took it without my permission and he hit me in my face and he ran away. What do we call this? Theft. Is this good or bad? Who on earth can call it but bad? Who on earth? You can't. Even if you said it, you know that I'm lying or I'm supporting a thief. <laughs> but I realize that this is bad. Regardless, what is the name that I'm using for it? Because I know by default that if it happened to me, I hate it by default. 
because simply I own it, it's mine. You have no right to take it from me. So if I did it with others and someone told me, hey, why did you take a string? Okay, what's the problem? What's the problem? You know a string. You don't need Islamic jurisprudence to come to convince you that this is wrong. But Islamic jurisprudence comes, the Sharia comes just to confirm, just to give the power, just to organize. But I realize by default. <laughs> so I, I go back. The other reference from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As if the Prophet is telling us You know why, what you should be doing to others Simply look what you would love others to do to you Very simple, by default, logical, you know, analogy Which is something what is the message? The message, it's so easy to control yourself if you want to do the good. <laughs> Not necessarily, I don't know. Some, some, maybe very complicated cases, maybe we can't be aware. That's why, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ But the basics, it's human by the way. The Quran and the Sunnah, they come just to affirm and to confirm, not to create the awareness. It just pays the attention to the reality that I have already realized, which is very important, by the way. And by the way, because of this common sense, we are able to talk with atheists. We are able to talk with non-believers. We are able to talk with other religions or otherwise there is no common ground. How come? And by the way, let's give me... I'm sorry, I wanted to finish, but just I remember something. By the way, part of the evidence about the existence of the common ground by Allah from us is the translation of the languages. Do you know if the language is not built in as a concept inside ourselves, we can't translate. We can't translate a language from one language. Are you with me? Now, for example, when I say, Anna, Uridu هذه التفاحة I want this apple Basically the concept of me with the word is Anna or I The concept is the same between all of us But I have a sound that is called Arabic And another sound that is called English Okay But the concept is inside when I affirm something, when I say, verily, indeed, I did it. The concept is the same between you and me. But I express myself in English, verily, indeed, I did it. You express yourself by, نعم, حقا, أنا فعلتها. But the concept, the meaning inside the same, or otherwise, translation will be impossible. <laughs> Which is the common ground between us because of the oneness of God who created us. Jazakum Allah khair. I'm very sorry, it's very philosophical khatira, but I hope that there is benefit in it. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum.